Hey guys, um, Jamie Filer. I am applying for the position of de novo tribe member. Um, I'm actually pretty nervous, but I figured that uh, giving you a video rather than um, like something written would be a lot more authentic and I would just be able to speak off the cuff rather than edit and proofread over and over and over again. Um, so I've got your questions in front of me and I'm going to try and answer them as honestly and openly as I can. Um, so your first one is, how do you identify de novo culture and why do you identify, how do you, yeah, okay. Um, de novo culture, okay. So I heard Ryan speak at uh, Lane Norton's camp in Toronto in 2014. And one thing that really resonated with me was that he feels very strongly about um, Ayn Rand's philosophy of objectivism. And the more posts I see from de novo and um, I think I, I've told Ben that I'm a huge fan of your podcast, the more I believe in it as a, a value of your company. Um, I believe that achievement um, in each of your personal lives, just hearing about each of your stories, I think that achievement is one of your highest priorities. Um, and I think that, I mean, the other one is happiness. Uh, when Ben and Ryan talked about the kind of conversations that go on at the home, um, essentially you guys do what makes you happy. The de novo culture is about succeeding and achieving at doing that which makes you happy. You guys have combined the best of both worlds into this really successful, awesome company. Um, it's also about team. Like, yeah, Ayn Rand is all about the individuals, but you guys have made de novo the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, essentially. Um, so the culture is about achievement, happiness, but not at the cost of anybody else. You guys have just all managed to bring it together. Um, and why do I identify with that is because as an athlete, um, and, and I guess in all of the jobs I've had as well, it's been very much about the team mentality. I, grow, I grew up playing basketball, um, high school and national level. And I was never part of a team where you had that one person that stuck out. And then the other four players were like, cool. Like I'm from Toronto, born and raised. And so the Toronto Raptors were always my favorite team. And we went through a period where it was Vince Carter and then four other guys. I don't believe in that. I believe in a team that was like, the Lakers in 2000 or 2001 where you had Kobe and you had Shaq and you had Rick Fox and you had Derek Fisher like all of those guys together is what made the championship so I believe in achieving happiness and being successful as a team um so the way all all three of you guys come together and and even the athletes that you have on your team like Alberto Nunez 3DMJ the guy has always been part of a team he's always been successful as part of a team. So I really identify with that part of, of your culture. Um, your question, next one, what athletic and or intellectual qualities do you feel that you need? Okay, so I'm gonna go with intellectual because that'll probably, I'll start with intellectual, it'll probably be a shorter answer. Um, intellectual qualities, I'm very quick. Um, I'm the editor of, a managing editor of Muscle Insider Magazine and I'm also their uh, online editor in chief. And it is my job to be good with words. It's my pro it's my job to not only be good with words by writing columns and features for every issue and even for stuff online. I also have to write our YouTube descriptions. But it's also my job to take our other writers and make sure that they sound like give them the muscle insider sound. We want our magazine to have a unified sound. Of course, each writer does his own thing and has his own specialty but essentially we want it all to come together. Muscular development has a sound, flex has a sound, so too Muscle Insider has a sound. So one of my strengths is that I'm great with words. Um, I'm quick-witted, um, I have a great sense of sarcasm, um, but I'm never mean about it. Uh, I, I mean, I think I'm pretty funny. Um, so that often comes across on social media, on Facebook, I have no problem getting my point across when I, with the written word. Um, so I think that could also be a great asset because we, we all know how strong social media is 
um, how important it is to get messages out there, especially if you're going to represent a company. You want to be sure that, you know, you say what you mean and you mean what you say. Um, so I'm really good at, at saying what I mean. And that's for sure. In terms of, uh, I think you said athletic qualities. Yeah. Um, I recently switched from bodybuilding to CrossFit. Um, I'd done 10 competitions um, in both junior women's bodybuilding and open women's bodybuilding, always uh, natural. Um, but I found that uh, my old, my old, not necessarily eating disorder habits, um, but more body dysmorphia um, was starting to rear its ugly head. I found that when it came to my physique, as I started to contest prep, nothing was ever good enough. Um, I'd been with, I'd been with Alberto, or I mean, up until very recently, I was with Alberto, and he was the one that transitioned me off of meal plans into If It Fits Your Macros, and then from If It Fits Your Macros into intuitive eating, and that is currently where I am. Um, but I'm now a very strong advocate of athletic pursuits versus just getting on stage and being ripped all the time. I'm a huge fan of powerlifting. I'm a ridiculous fan of CrossFit um, at the even at the regional level. Um, I mean, I watch the games religiously, the CrossFit games. I follow all of them on on Instagram. I watched uh, the NPGL, the National Pro Grid League, every time they had a game. I even went to a, a game out in Miami because I'm just a, hu a huge fan of of athletes, um, and I try and and be one. In my everyday life as well, I practice CrossFit six days a week. Um, I have a coach specifically to prep me for the Open going into 2016. Um, so I've got I've got him helping me with the power lifts. I've got him helping me with the Olympic lifts. And then starting in January, once a week, every week, I'm also going to take gymnastics lessons. Um, there's nothing I won't try. I've tried bodybuilding. Um, I've tried powerlifting. I wasn't very good at it, so I had to give that up very quickly. Um, and now I'm trying CrossFit and I love it, but most importantly, I think my story of coming from an eating disorder, getting into bodybuilding, being mildly successful at the natural level with that, and now getting into CrossFit as a role model, like I want to be amazing so that I can be a role model for other people could really help, um, well, help people in general, but I guess help the company, um, if you're asking about how my athletic pursuits could be helpful. Um, yeah, I'm no stranger when it comes to talking about my eating disorder, because if my story can inspire just one person, then my 10 years of, uh, of suffering from anorexia would have been worth it. Um, so I'm, I'm an, an, I'm an open book. Um, your next question. I'm sorry. In your opinion, how can DeNovo be better in the short and long term? Um, hmm, this is a tough one. Um, long term, I'm going to, I guess, expanding your product line. Um, I understand how much research goes into every single, every single thing you do. Um, and also I, I can't even pretend to know what it's like to even begin to formulate a product in general. So it's easy for me to say, you know, uh, you know, long term, you guys are going to need a pre-workout. You guys are going to need some sort of intra workout. Sorry, I meant like a pre a pre workout that's different than Utopian, like one of those hardcore, like super pump. Um, I don't like a nighttime pill. You know what I mean, like a ZMA product. I don't know, um, but I would definitely expand your product line because it, you guys have a huge following. Um, take advantage of it. Uh, short term, I was thinking about this. This is probably the only the only question that I wanted to do some like research on. I can't think of a whole lot long term. I I do think that getting on board with having athletes and ambassadors is a really good idea because that's like almost free promotion for you guys. Um, and the more people that get the word out about DeNovo, both organically, you know, just someone who buys Utopian and decides to promote it on their own Instagram is amazing. But then having like hired athletes do it for you um, could definitely help build the brand. Um, Okay, if I think of something over the course of the next few questions regarding short and long term, then I will give you more information. I'm sorry, I'm not jam packed with super smart, creative answers, but I'm just I'm just gonna go with more stuff long term. Um, 
Next question, product question. What is your favorite de novo product? Um, 100% Utopian. Yeah. Um, doing two a days and uh, having to write 2,500 word articles for the magazine and then reading other people's 2,500 word articles required. Why did my eyebrows? I'm like so excited. Um, but this is the kind of focus that I need and that is exactly what Utopian provides. Um, why have you used your product? Okay, well, full disclosure, I used it because it was what all of the cool kids were using. Um, again, like I said, when I met um, Ryan and Ben uh, in Toronto, I was just kind of blown away um, by the way they spoke and, and what they spoke about and just how much they believed in their product and themselves. And then everyone in, on Team Norton just started talking about DeNovo and I was like, okay, I will jump on your bandwagon. So that is originally why I decided to, like, right off the bat, um, my first order was two bottles of Utopian because it's what everyone else was buying. Um, but if you guys have that much faith in your product and Team Norton has that much faith in your product, um, but yeah, I originally bought it to be, to be one of the cool kids, for sure. Um, what type of products do you feel are missing from our line and why? Um... I'm going to go with a BCAA, but a BCAA that is more like Extend when that first came out. Um, like I said, when I do my, uh, I do two a days often. I'll hit um, my Olympic lifts in the morning and then usually a Metcon uh, in the afternoon or evening um, after my work day. Uh, usually in CrossFit, obviously, you know that you've got your strength portion, then immediately after you have your Metcon. And I just found that that couldn't, I couldn't give a hundred percent to both things if I did them back to back. So now I spend about 45 minutes to an hour lifting in the morning and then whatever, 12 to 35 minutes, um, in the afternoon doing metabolic conditioning. And it would be amazing if I had, one all-in-one like BCAA glutamine product that really helped with recovery and soreness after. Um, you could even throw, you know, real whole proteins in there as well, like complete proteins. Um, I don't care if it has calories because they're going to be burnt anyway, but um, something, something intra workout, uh, I think is what, is what you guys need, or at least what I need. And it would just be really helpful if you guys need it. Um, the graphic. Okay. Right. Oh, I like this question. Okay. So in terms of your, your little graphics, um, the one I would choose is fearless. Uh, I don't need my phone anymore. Um, the reason I, the re I don't know. I don't know why it just, that, that adjective more than any other one spoke to me. Um, it ties into authenticity, but, um, I'm going to go with fearless. So once upon a time I was in first year university, and I was a huge fan of the bodybuilding.com forums. Um, ben can vouch for this. And I was, yeah, I was like 18, 19 years old. And I was a huge fan of Mark Lobliner and Derek. And I was in the Derek forums all the time, like just commenting and helping people out because I was a huge fan of the Cyvation product line. And then one day, I don't know why, but I messaged Mark privately, like in an email, and I said, hey, huge fan of what you guys do, but, um, with all due respect, your form is a total sausage fest. Like you don't, I am your only girl. Um, and I know that I'm not the only girl using your, your protein, your substance WPI. And I know I'm not the only girl using extend. So why don't you guys ever talk to girls or about girls? And Mark said, well, what, you know, what are you implying? What do you, what are you thinking? And I said, I, I think I should be on your team. I think it should be like, Derek, Mark, Lane, and Jamie. And Mark said, okay. And I said, okay. And he said, well, let's try you out. And, uh, and then if it works, we'll just make this a thing. And back when I was 19, I was Cyvation's first sponsored female athlete. It was me, Derek, Mark, Lane, Tommy Jeffers, Bill, uh, I forget his name whatever. But either way, I was, I was the only girl on this team of guys because I was fearless. I told, I, to, I told, I didn't ask Mark. I told Mark that he needed a girl on his team and that I wanted to be that girl. So he sent me to like the Arnold's, the Olympias. Um, he, it was me, Derek and Mark just talking back and forth nonstop. And it was amazing. Um, and then about 
two years later, um, I had already gotten to know Lane at that point um, from working the Salvation booth. And then I, I messaged the editor-in-chief of bodybuilding.com one day out of the blue. And I said, you don't know me, but I'm a Salvation sponsored athlete. I'm a, a kinesiology student out of Canada. And again, with all due respect, what you have Lane doing on the forums at, at the Arnold and the Olympia is amazing um, for men. You have Lane covering men's bodybuilding, and it's fantastic. And you have Bob Chicarillo talking about it, and it's fantastic, blah, blah, blah. But where are the ladies at? Like, why don't you have anyone talking about female bodybuilding, fitness, figure? At the time, there was no um, physique or bikini. And Chris Gethin said, well, what do you suggest? And I said, I suggest you have one computer, and you have Lane and I sitting next to each other. And the second the boys go off stage and it's girls time, he doesn't just close his computer and be done with it and write his review. He hands the computer over to me and then it's my turn to take over. And that, he's like, whoa, I never even thought of that. I'm like, well, how are you going to neglect three out of four categories? Because again, there was no men's physique at the time. Um, so bodybuild, I was like, I mean, it's... It's a hyperbole, but I was like the female Lane Norton for the Arnolds and the Olympias. And I worked for bodybuilding.com for four years. And then that turned into this huge writing gig with them where I would interview famous people about their workouts and their lifestyles. But it was because I was fearless. I saw a gap in the market, but not just a gap. I saw a gap that I felt like I could fulfill and do it well. Um, and then I just ran with the idea. Um... And if, if there's anything I don't know, then I just learn it. Yeah, I'm not afraid to say I don't know. But I don't say I don't know and then pass it off to somebody else. I say I don't know and then I go out and learn it. That's that's what I do. Um, so yeah, I am pretty fearless. Uh, I've got balls. You can't see them, but they're pretty big. Um, I hope I answered all of your questions really well. I hope you consider me. Um, but even if not, even if this was just like, 18 minutes and you picked someone better. I just, I still want to thank you guys for your products, for your YouTube videos, um, for your inspirational, all of your inspirational social media posts, and mostly just for being who you are. Like I said, it, I mean, the Lane Norton VIP camp wasn't recorded at any point, but it was in May of 2014, and I still think about Ryan's speech that day. Um, so the impact that you guys have is... Um, there are no words for it. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to thank you guys a lot and, uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks.